Daniel. Evening councils are locked up in the meeting with the prayer. Almighty God, be with us as people of the Shire. That we may care for the Shire as true stewards of your creation. May we be aware of the great responsibility of the we we respectfully acknowledge the traditional owners of this land and pay our respects to the elders past and present our councillors just be aware that this is being live streamed this meeting it is a new uh, little bit of technology for us tonight we're using zoom which is a little bit different so we will have speakers that will be able to come in electronically tonight. There's no apologies. All councillors are present. Confirmation of minutes. I move the minutes. Move Councillor Cowes to Councillor Bingham. Those in favour? Carried. Any conflicts of interest, councillors? No conflicts of interest. We've got one question in public question time. I'm reading that out. So the, the question comes to Miss Morris. Uh, and the question is where does Council stand on mining in the Wombat State Forest? As local stakeholders, how how can we get information about this? What involvement influence does Council have in the decision making processes regarding mining in the Wombat State Forest? Mr. Bowsen how I'll ask you to respond to that if if you would like. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Thank you for the question um, regarding this particular issue. Um, just to mention, the Department of Jobs, Precincts and Regions uh, regulate minerals exploration in Victoria. The specific department is the responsible approval authority. And within that department, I've got the Earth Resources Regulator, and I act under the um, relevant legislation, which is the um, Mineral Resources Sustainability Development Act of 1990. Council is not part of the approval process. Um, mineral exploration is not permitted in a state or national park unless a license was granted before the area was declared as a park. Exploration is permitted on Crown land and in state forests as well. In a local context, this means that exploration is allowed within Wombat State Forest, but it's not allowed within the Lillibank State Forest. So they've got an existing license which allows them to do mineral exploration. Um, there is information available, and I can send to the um, the later I can send a link that provides some more specific information. Um, we are we've also going to put some information on social media, so we we'll work with our comms team that the um, public can access that information as well. Um, as mentioned, council is not involved in the uh, approval process. Um, we are however, in contact with the regulator, and we'll make sure with this one we keep in contact with them. We also know. Um, looking at it from an enforcement point of view to see if any removal of vegetation does require planning permit or that there's exceptions under the planning scheme. We will be conducting site visits, we will be monitoring the process and if there's any other that under the planning scheme we will then directly uh, contact the um, earth resources regulator. Thank you Mr. Mayor. Any questions councillors? No questions? Move on to petitions. We have one petition tonight, which is item 9.1. It is a petition on Donald Street, Backus Marsh, request for streetscape improvement. I'm happy to move the recommendation. Move Councillor Dudzik, second Councillor Borgalt. I've got a question. Certainly, Councillor Sullivan. Let, let, let it uh, be resolved. The question really doesn't, it's just, just on a matter of process, I guess. Are there any objections, Councillors? Those in favour? Gary. I guess my question, Mr. Mayor, is we've seen a number of these petitions come to council in more recent times. It just seems to be potentially an avenue to get something done, i.e. Hogan's Road, Griffith Street, etc. So I guess it's just with a word of caution, I'm just sort of, is this the new norm? We're going to sort of um, residents who choose to get something done, just get a petition and then all of a sudden that's the avenue to get, uh, get whatever you want uh, done because we've had a 
couple in the last six, 12 months where people have done that and the next thing council turns out and spends a lot of money sort of fixing it up. Three so, years. Mr. Um, I mean, council takes every petition on the basis and then that information is brought back for council to make a decision. Generally speaking, if it's part of the capital works, which was the case with some of those projects, they do proceed, but where it's outside of the capital works, uh, a decision is brought back for council to make a decision as to the outcome. Thank you. I'll mention Chris. Certainly, Councillor Zolman. A lot of the uh, projects, engineering particularly, are in the capital works, but they're in the long-term capital works. I guess that's, yeah. say it's in the capital works, I think it's about everything, because I've seen the list and it ran into about 250 million the last time I saw. Um, so I guess the fact that it's on it doesn't necessarily mean that it should get precedent at all. Yeah. Yep. True, Mr. No, I fully, fully agree with it. The fact that it has a petition shouldn't get precedence over the condition assessment that the asset managers will undertake. Very good, thank you. Councillors, we'll move into, we've got no presentations, deputations. Um, moving to item 12.1, which we have a speaker which is the Mattingly Planning Study Background Report Consultation. And we have... Yeah. Levy. Mr and Mrs Levy, if you'd like to speak. Okay. You're still on mute. Bob, you're still on mute. I think you need a sign that says... We can't hear you. I'm sorry, but can't say it, but okay. I'm requesting to unmute now. Oh, here we go. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Okay. As a rate payer, I'm very disappointed in the quality of the report presented by this consultant that you hired. Uh, it feels like a 12 year, like a year 12 report and reads like a sales promotion for all things collegia. There are twisting ideas like Collegia should buy the land in the west side of the investigated area, saying that would be a fair outcome. But on the other hand, this report also states that Collegia already owns about a third of the area. That should be a, an adequate amount that they already own. Mr. Levy, you might need to look at your speaker a bit more. You're breaking up a little bit. Up a little bit with the mic. Is any better? Yeah, that's better. Okay, so it's, um, it's saying that uh, a third of the land in the study area is already owned by Collegia, and that that should be an adequate amount already. Uh, in, in, um, and there would be no need to be concerned about the other two thirds of, uh, of the, the area as amenity. Uh, the consultant then goes on to say that there was no review of complaints. About Mattingly Brown Coal over the many years. So, what does that mean? That there hasn't been any? Because I'm pretty sure there has. Um, Did we get them to ring you? Pardon? Yeah, you, you, every time you sort of look down to the left, you start to break up. <laughs> um, the consultant says, um, All right, do I need to start over? Yeah. Oh. I don't know what he said. I have no idea. You better, you better start again. That's frozen. Either that'll get him to ring and put him on speaker. How about that? Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay, as a rate payer, I, as I said, I'm very disappointed in this report that you've had done by this consultant. Um, I, I felt it was more like of a high school level. Um, I'll, I'll skip the very beginning. Um, the, the, the consultant says that there was a review. There was no review of complaints about Mattingly Brown Coal over the many years. And I'm concerned that, that you know, what does that mean? Because I know that they've been plenty of times people have complained about them. Um, he also talked about uh, a fence that was built to contain the litter that was blowing over, as you can see behind me. Um, you know, and that, that was 100% effective. Well, as you can see from this picture, it's not. Um, and that's a recent picture from Facebook. Uh, Aboriginal concerns were also in the study, but they said that, uh, you know, that, that 
they'll deal with them as they come. Well, there is a sacred tree not far from my house, about 500 years old. Um, and, and um, you know, that, that, that will get in the way of any future coal mining. Um, in another section, they point out that the coal is still important to be mined for the two businesses that use it, even though one of those isn't even operating yet, the fertilizer plant. And this report claims that the Parwin Valley Mushroom Farm uses Mattingly Brown Coal Compost, where that is completely wrong. Uh, NBC suspects to remove all the used compost, not to sell it to them. Yeah. Confirm that today with the Mushroom Farm. To add salt to the wound, this report says that NBC sells coal to Calix, where the business relationship is actually- How can resolve this? Pardon? Yeah, Councillor Bingham's got a question. Uh, Mr. Mayor, can we just ask uh, Mr. Lavely to sit for closer to the right where his wife is currently sitting? Um, because they had the same issues in the online protest. Uh, so, yeah, we may be able to hear you now. Sitting in can you that hear me position. better now? Pitch yeah. better. Oh, okay. Very directional. Um, so, the, well, I don't know where to go then. Um, you can see the fence behind me. That's the litter. That's what I was talking about. Um, one of the things they talked about, oh yes, was here I am, uh, was um, the, that uh, the, they sell coal to Calix, is another consumer of their coal product. Uh, and in reality, the only bus business relationship that they have with Calix is that Calix rents the land that they're on and from NBC and that they occasionally use uh, Mattingly Brown Coal's weigh bridge to weigh the product that they're receiving to process at their plant, the special mineral that they mine from their own mine, not Collegia's mine. So this report has that all wrong as well. Uh, and I confirm that with Calix today. Um, they use no coal in their process. So I'm not sure where this consultant's gotten his information from. Uh, perhaps they were a bit misled by Collegio. Um, there's a part of this report that talks about the need for coal in the future, waste to energy and hydrogen production if it goes ahead. And therefore the special use zone area might need to be mined. This ignores the drilling done by Mantle Mining and their partner of the day, Exergen, whose Jork reports revealed how fast the seam disappears on this west side and the lower quality of the coal in this area. This has been done much later than the 2006 date, which is mentioned in your study. Another interesting statement is that the roads are not up to business stroke industry standard and would, not, and would need to be upgraded. And yet apparently it will be good enough receive 460 truck movements a day if the soil comes down from the tunnel. So apparently the Shire has enough industrial land also um, to last about 40 years according to this report. So in the report they also say that some of that land is not suitable. Uh, it was This report was written before the COVID-19 pandemic and the push for more manufacturing now is to return to Australia. And the, there is a new renewed interest in um, working from home. So living rural is now a viable option. The, the report also talks about my area being a farming zone. Yet it also points out that no one in any way, in that way, uh, the lots are too small and are con, uh, to be considered for farming. So what is this area? This area is forgotten. It's with weed and pest infestation due to 20 years of special use zone one restrictions. A recent 53 house subdivision was passed by the Shire despite, despite NBC fighting it in VCAT. It is closer to the West Waste Hub than my area on South Mattingly Road. But this area for the 53 house subdivision is not in the SUZ-1. 
So NBC had to argue their complaints in the courts rather than to just bully. They don't have to do that with us. They can bully their way here. They can, so I'm asking you to take that tool away from them. Give us some direction, some rights, a chance to be a lifestyle property, make two or five or 10 acre blocks available in our area. And if an old family town name can put up 53 houses closer to Mattingly Brown Coal with the support of the Shire, then give us the right to divide and share our rural lifestyle. Push that zone back to the coal borders. Take it off private land holders. And if I had my way, I would not pay this consultant their full fee as they have given you a high school value document. Something I heard today fits. And it is, it is never, it is never wrong to do the right thing. Thank you. Mrs. Uh, any questions, Councillors? Councillor Bingham? Well, I just got a question and it's come up council um, in the past and we've, I think we've investigated in the past, but uh, just in regards to the special use zone, um, the, the buffer, uh, what's what's the process, and can we can we move that to the other side of the road? To, to it, it's not only Mr. Levy's uh, property that's affected. Obviously, there's there's a number of properties there, but can can that buffer just be moved on the opposite side of the road? Sarah, Sarah. Sorry, I was just seeking clarification as to when the question was about the zone. Um, the zone itself can be changed, but we need to go through a planning scheme and then the process in order to change the zone. So, can we begin that process? Do we need a do we need a motion? Or? The 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 intent is that the Manningley planning study, which is the, the next phase, would make recommendations as to the removal of the, the issues into the area that would be suitable to remove, and then what the appropriate zone would be to replace it with. Okay, so the, so the moving of that special use zone is in here. Uh, this is a background report. The the next stage is to prepare a planning the Manningley planning study, which would make recommendations on the removal. of the issues yeah, okay. Um, it's more um, a question or clarification from officers. Um, isn't the purpose of progressing to the Mattingly planning study so that we can improve um, the special use zone for some of the res residents who live nearby? So I can answer that. So that's, that's precisely the purpose of the study is to look at um, the local planning policy, to look at the zone and to look at the overlays and to specifically see whether those planning controls are appropriate and what should be the best appropriate planning controls to, um, to deal with that or to manage that conflicting land uses. So one of the issues that's been raised by the submitter will specifically be, um, should be documented and that should form part of the process of developing the study and look at those policy outcomes and look at those zone provisions and overlay provisions. I can't attach it. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just want to bring up a couple of concerns of, uh, under this live streaming, we're continually uh, bringing about private businesses and companies and people are being able to make defamatory remarks about their performance. So I think we know that uh, I mean, it's fairly easy to look up who consultants are, it's easy to look up other businesses, but I think we need to be very careful about what we say about it when it's just an opinion. I did. Councillor Bingham. Uh, just supplementary. Um, so when when's the next stage proposed to come to council? Um, stage one is the, the sign off on the background issues and opportunities paper. This is basically gathering all the information and the facts. We have 32 submissions. We've been through intensive consultation process to get input from land owners within the design and the buffer area. So that process is now all collated in the background document. The next step would be if council signs off on the background report, it basically acknowledges the background work and all the submissions, then that will form the process to develop the terms of reference for stage two. And stage two will be the study process. And once again, that process will require council sign off involvement and consultation with the community. So this report hasn't put forward any recommendations 
or an art gap. So it just forms a collection of all the background information and the submitters had opportunity to provide input in this report. And that is all documented and formed um, the basis for stage two, which is still to commence, which hasn't yet commenced. Yeah, so just so uh, just um, the the date when that stage two is uh, proposed to come to the council meeting. Do we have a date yet? A rough time frame? Um, I can maybe ask Sarah to. We've got an indicative date. Um. Yeah. So the the council report for it's early twenty twenty one. Um, so it's started next year. Um, we can look at potentially expediting that. Um, some of the delays are will be related to the council care <laughs> period and also Christmas, which makes it uh, difficult to both report to council but undertake community consultation. Thank you. Mrs. Levy, you'd like to speak as well, I believe. Yeah. You're on mute. Sorry, they're not on mute. Can't hear you, Mrs. Levy. That tissue moves in the middle of the hall. Can you hear me now? Yes. Thank you. I can't hear. You need to you need to move where you, Mr. Levy was sitting before, I think. Up real close. How's that? Hey, that's good. Okay. <laughs> I don't have a microphone. Sorry. Uh, my concerns are similar to my husband's with this report: the inconsistency, the inaccuracies. It's not relevant or inclusive of the current scenario. I understand it is a background report, but they're all relevant to the decisions that you folk are going to have to make. Um, I found it interesting that every time the report came to a tricky question, it said more study required. This area deserves more study. And I don't think you're going to have enough information. Um, there's a lack of accurate description of the coal resource. And in some cases, I would, did note that the special use zone was questioned as to the appropriateness of its, even its initial uh, placement. Um, I just wanted to draw the uh, council's attention to Rebecca Smarsh Grammar's submission 9B, which I thought was a very useful summary of, of uh, directions in which to go and things that council might consider in their deliberations. Uh, we appreciate that this report has come to you in the middle of the COVID scenario and that's, that's taking additional time and pushing everything back. So we thank you for this opportunity. Any okay, now any questions, councillors? No questions, thank you. I'm happy to move the recommendation. Councillor Dudley, move for recommendation. Second, oh, Council, second, Councillor Bingham. Are there any objections? No objections. Those in favour? Just a question, if I may, Mr. Arthur. You've certainly carried. So, all the uh, submissions and the points made by Mr. and Mrs. Levy will all feed into the, uh, the next stage of this development? Could you, Mr. Levy, yes. We've got the written submissions and um, we've got the submission that we tonight as well. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thanks. This is item 12.2, which is the West Mattingly Development Plan Part 3. Councillors have a recommendation. Move Council Borgal. Second to Councillor Keogh, are there any objections or questions? I had a question. Certainly, Councillor Sullivan. Probably, given that this has a little bit of history on the original uh, uh, development overlay, I think it's articulated on page 23, it was exhibited back in, I think Council adopted in 2011, so the exhibition was probably uh, some time before that. Um, and the area that's now being sought to be redeveloped were there any submission? Does that, is there anything on file of some of those objectors who were satisfied by the fact that this land wasn't to be developed then? I suppose I'm looking to see whether anyone's rights may have been sort of uh, extinguished by this, who perhaps had a, 
a point back then objecting to it and was happy when that was removed out of the original outline development plan. I suppose it's just a matter of seeing with the procedural fairness, I guess. Um, through you, Mr Mayor. Um, I don't have a copy of those submissions at hand and aren't able to answer that question. What I, I can say is that development plans are actually exempt from advertising. We do often advertise them, um, but it's important to note that when we do, that even your rights, so we can consider their comments, but we can't actually use them in important decision making. So I, I, I think that, I, sorry, Mr. Mayor, I realise that it's articulated in the report itself and makes, makes that point quite strongly, but it's just a matter of, I think, uh, you know, I'd hate to sort of think that somebody who thought at the time that their uh, concerns were listened to and heard it and the, what was adopted was in line with that and now all of a sudden the ground rules change, that's all. But anyway, it is what it is, but it's one of those things to be going forward. I think we just need to have regard because these things evolve over time and uh, you can't extinguish people's rights, I don't think. All right, so we have a mover and a second. Do we have any objections? Those in favour? Yes, Solomon. I did put my hand up. Sorry, I didn't see it. Carried. Moving to item 12.3, which is stage subdivision, stage 22 and 23 of the Stonehill Estate at McCormick's Road, Mattingly. It just follows on. I'll move it. Move Councillor Sullivan, second to Councillor Bingham. Are there any objections? Those in favour? Carried. At item 12.4, Visitor Information Centre Service Review. Happy to move the recommendation. Move Councillor Dudzik, second Councillor Borgell. Are there any questions or objections? Not objection. Let's have a question. Um, Certainly, Councillor Sullivan. Recommendation suggests that we have a council adopt a holistic, holistic approach recognise the broader importance. Um, later on in the document on page 65, it says it is proposed that council adopt all recommendations contained in the other report. So I guess, and I know the, the recommendation will stand in our precedence, um, but what is, are we sort of going to now develop a scoping document or something with respect to how this holistic approach is going to be pan out or, or not? I'm just trying to get a, a read on that, please. Um, Henry. Mr. Meek, um, I can answer and then with your permission, get Dean to also provide input. Yep, absolutely. But, but yes, this is um, a following the review of the BIC. Yep. And we concluded that we need a more of a strategic approach. We need to have a more holistic approach and how the BIC integrates in different elements of the tourism economy. Yep. So therefore, we will be the scope, and we will bring that scope back to council as well, yes. so not before we start the policy process. Oh, that's fine. That answers the question. Answer I'll the go. question? Yes, okay. answer my question. Was no worries. Speak for the no. so We have mover and second. Uh, those in favour? <laughs> Carried. Item 12.5, formation of local business advisory committee. Move Councillor Tatchell. I'll second. Second Councillor Dudzik. What was that? What was that? <laughs> I said understand. I tried to second it. Ah, oh, no worries. <laughs> so I have a mover and a second. Any questions or objections? Mr. Could I? Certainly. It's not much an objection, but could I suggest that, uh, well, I suppose this is a question. That the actual terms of reference be, uh, I don't want to impede at the moment, but we actually revisit the terms of reference because I don't, I think it'd be better if it had no councillors on it. And we actually, uh, other than say an officer to service it, because I think committees that have council, then people sort of the councillors get involved too much hands on and have too much ownership of it. And, and I think it would be better served if, in fact, we had, we call for nominations for a chair and nominations for committee members, because there are a, a large number of retired professional people out in the municipality who would actually serve this committee exceedingly well. And that's the resource we have, rather than having councillors involved in it. 
Okay. Move a more formal to amend it if that's the case, but I'm asking it not to, not to impede it here today, but we revisit the terms of reference to, to sort of allow that idea to be uh, canvassed. So, yeah. Okay. You, Mr. Mayor. I suppose it's, it's a decision of council if, if you want to defer that component of it and we bring it back to uh, the terms of reference component back for a discussion. At, at the moment, it is it does have a recommendation for council inclusion. Well, not, not wishing to sort of, I think we need to get this thing going, but I think the terms of reference, I would suggest that we... Uh, Are you asking that we have a look at them again and... Revisit. So yeah, not not the idea of having a uh, an advisory committee, but I think I'd, I think it would have more impetus if councillors weren't involved in it at all. Are so you ha you're happy for it to go as it is at the moment, but you yes, look at to have a look at. Yes, yes, I think that can be done. Yes. That can be done again. expeditiously. Yes, however, mover and a seconder. Do we have any objections? Those in favour? Carried. No community strengthening reports. We'll move into customer care and advocacy reports. Item 14.1, which is consideration of submissions to the draft 2017-2021 council plan. I'm happy to move the recommendation. Move Councillor Dudzik. I'll oh, second it. Second the Councillor Keogh. Do we have any questions or objections? No. Those in favour? Carried. Item 14.2, consideration of submissions of the proposed 20. 21 annual budget. Move Council Bingham. Second to Council Ball Galt. Do we have any questions or objections? Council Sullivan? Not, not an objection. I, I'm just wondering whether a number of these are in the infrastructure realm and it's just maybe as part of the response, but maybe they could just be sort of put into the to the and more like customer responses, aren't they, really? Three or three. Yeah, we're happy to include them as a, as a customer response, but as far as part of this process, no, no, no. I'll give a, so I'll also give a formal... They don't just drop off. Yeah, that's all. No yeah. worries. So those in favour? Councillor Tatchell, carried. Item 14.3, Section 86, Delegated Committees of Council Reports. Move Councillor Bingham. Second. Second, Councillor Keogh. Those in favour? Yep. Carried. Item 14.4, Advisory Committees of Council Reports. Move, Councillor Dudzik. Second. Second Councillor Borgelt. Any objections? Those in favour? Carried. Item 14.5, Pro Procurement Policy Review. I'm happy to move. Move, Councillor Dudzik. Any questions or objections? Second, Councillor Keogh. Those in favour? Carried. Item 15.1, Bores and Standpipes Policy. Happy to. Move, Councillor Borgell. Second, Second Councillor just, a, just question, a, Councillor uh, Sullivan. Uh, just a yeah, point of that mirth. I was actually reading, I don't know whether anyone read the definitions. And the difference between usable charge is when customers are not required, uh, sorry, usable chargeable use when customers are required to pay for access water, and free is when customers are not required to pay for access water. <laughs> I thought it was, in the definition, I thought it was self explanatory, but obviously we do need to have it defined. Certainly, Kansas Sullivan. So we have a mover and a seconder. Do we have any objections? Those in favour? Carried. No other reports. Notice there's a motion. We have item 17.1, notice the motion, Mirable Arts Trail. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so just a bit of a preamble. Uh, a Mirable Arts Trail would not only play an important role in promoting tourism and boosting the local, it would promote safe driving practices. The Western Freeway runs through the heart of Mirable Shire Council and an arts trail would give motorists another excuse to pull over and rest for 15 minutes. Uh, so that they can carry on their journey refreshed and safely. I want to target those motorists, holiday makers, tourists, caravanners who travel this long and straight freeway with nothing to see along the way. I want to say to people, hey, come to our beautiful towns and hamlets, explore our history and spend some money in our local economy. Uh, this arts trail has the ability to promote our rich heritage and culture through these murals. 
let's create a movable arch trail that sees our travellers loop through the Shire if they wish to do the entire trail, uh, whilst also taking advantage of our many tourism champions such as the Lala Falls, Werribee Gorge and Lurdy Dirk State Park. Uh, now I'll read through, I'll read my motion. Uh, so the council, uh, there's two parts. So one, during the development of the Mirable Arts and Cultural Strategy and resulting action plan, explore the possibility of a broad active engagement through the implementation of a Mirable Arts Trail, inclusive of public art installations on infrastructure, including silos, water tanks, and other structures which may be utilized for this project. And finally, number two, officers explore external grants and funding streams available to support outcomes of the Mirable Arts and Cultural Strategy. Moved to Councillor Bingham. Happy to second. Second to Councillor Dudzy. Do we have any questions, Councillors? Certainly, Councillor Sullivan. Probably more to the move, Mr Mayor. Are you actually asking that we actually investigate the possibility of having an arts trail? Or, because I'm, I'm just a bit... Because uh, this implies we are going to do one or something. So, uh, yeah. Oh, no worries, I'll answer that one. So, um, Council moved to uh, include a, 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 um, an arts officer, um, and we're currently going through an arts and, and cultural strategy. So, I'm just simply asking, as, as part of that process, um, let's give our arts officer something extra to do and, and investigate the possibility of this. And it's, so, in no way meaning is this, is this motion, hey, let's do it, because we don't have all the facts yet. Um, but, yeah, definitely, let's investigate it. Councillor yeah, so Thatcher's got a question. Yeah, thanks, Mr Mayor. Uh, look, uh, my concern, we're talking about a very large area that would have to be covered. My, my questions, I suppose, would be, one would, art being a very selective thing, uh, one, would we have to maintain the art once it was done? Would the people that create the art require a permit to put it on public display? And, uh, and <laughs> What if they didn't like the art? I mean, I think trying to compare an arts trail with a couple of silos in a very small town that have been painted magnificently for a theme is a lot different than trying to do a whole shire. And uh, it's in their interest to maintain those silo paintings. But my concern is it could run into a very large bill if somebody objected to the art or, or it, uh, you know, or one, one, one person's mates, another person's poison. So, uh, I suppose it's just a bit wishy-washy for me. That's all. I, I, I'm just not really sure exactly what it is. Question. Yeah. All right. So we have a mover and a seconder. Do we have any objections? Those in favour? Those against? Those abstaining? Can't note it. Motion is carried. Item 17.2, notice of motion 289, all ability swing. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, for all those uh, back, well, I'm sure everybody uh, is familiar with Packers Marsh, but uh, there is an all ability swing uh, adjacent Manly um, playground. And I, I feel it's only fitting that we explore the possibilities, but um, my, I'll just go through my preamble. Uh, so in inclusive playgrounds enable children, parents, grandparents and carers of all abilities and ages to socialise and enjoy play spaces side by side on the same equipment and in the same environment, rather than a dedicated playground for people with disabilities. They are play spaces designed for the use and benefit of all community members, ensuring full integration of uh, children and families and improved community connections. People and children of all abilities should be able to access equipment and enjoy play opportunities without leaving the Shire. Current universal design principles and access for all abilities principles should be considered when designing new and or renewing established play spaces across Mirable. So my motion is in three parts. Uh, so one, the council explores the possibility of installing an all abilities uh, swing at Dalek Playground. Uh, number two, officers explore the possibility of installing all abilities play equipment at each district and municipality, uh, municipal uh, tier playground. Uh, number three, officers prepare a report on the location and cost of installing a regional tier or abilities playground for children with cognitive and sensory disabilities. I'll second the motion. Second, Councillor Keogh. I just have a question. I'm not sure. If right off. So my question is, does Council already consider some of these things as part of our the, the standard processes we'd use for developing playgrounds? 
streams there. And this would probably be at a higher level. We do consider it, um, but this this requirement would probably be at a higher level and would, wouldn't be at our local parks okay. to that extent. Yep. Yeah. So just, just a sort of a quick, what does an all abilities swing look like? I'm, I'm just, I may have seen one, but not know what they're actually called. Has anyone sort of got a diagram? I'll answer it. It's like a big chair. It cancels uh, bigger. So, um, so basically their entire wheelchair goes into the swing. Okay. Yeah. Right. Second case, what's district and municipal tier playground? What does, what, what, what would, give me an example of one or the other that would, that might apply to So I've got an understanding of what, what uh, playground facilities across the municipality that would potentially be applicable to. Mr. Jeffries. Is he on? I've asked him to unmute. Uh, Did you get that? Through, yes. Yeah, I'm just getting well, the technology right through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so, a district playground would be the likes of Mattingly Park, would be what we'd call a district playground. Uh, a, a municipal playground probably doesn't have a, a defined uh, well, definition at this point in time, um, but it would be at our higher order parks, um, would be my assumptions. I think that hierarchy probably needs to be uh, established through the, the Reckon Open Space strategy that's uh, coming up. Yeah. Do we have a move and a second to councillors? Is there any objections? Those in favour? Carried. Item 17.3, which is notice of motion, pedestrian access and parking Blackwood. To read my preamble? Yes, Councillor Borgell. Uh, yeah, well, as, as it says in the preamble, Blackwood is becoming an increasingly popular tourist destination, which is having an impact on existing town infrastructure. Um, due to this increased visitation, there may be potentially accessibility and safety risks due to the limited infrastructure in the township, especially the safe provision of footpaths and formalised parking. Um, I'll put forward the motion that uh, requests the township improvement that a township improvement plan is developed for Blackwood in 2021, including community consultation that considers opportunities to improve amenity and accessibility, including provision to footpaths and formal parking in Martin Street and surrounds. Also request that the outcomes of the Blackwood township improvement plan be circulated to councillors when completed. I'll second the motion. Second to Councillor Keogh. Have we got any questions or objections? Councillor Sullivan. We I know we've been over the journey. Council have been doing some work in some small towns across the municipality. And I guess where does Blackwood currently sit in that league table? So maybe that's a direct question to uh, Mr. Jeffrey, if he's still. Yep, Mr. Jeffrey. Yeah, thanks uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, next financial year we're proposing to undertake. Um, Blackwood and Greendale as the two towns with the township improvement plans. <clears throat> Last financial year was Dunstown yep. uh, and it, it was actually supposed to be Lowell, so we'll incorporate that one as well in this financial year. The COVID yep. has probably made it a bit hard to interact with the communities of late, yep. so we've got to think our way through how we would roll that out. Okay. Just a supplementary question. Right? Council. And this may be something that might come out of that consultation. We're sort of presuming that they want to formalise parking and footpaths in the town. And I know some of the smaller towns want to, they don't want to urbanise their town. So I'm just concerned that we could be going in with a preconceived view rather than sort of saying, what does the community sort of want? And um, if we say formalised par formalise parking to me means you've got asphalt and you've got lines. Now, maybe that's something, you know, that the... So I'm, I'm assuming the question is, would we have pre preconceived idea or would we consider go through public consultation? Well, I guess that's what I'm alluding. I'm working to that, Mr. Mouse, yeah. working to that. Um, but I think that's that's really what I'm... That, I'd hate to sort of see we preempt pre an outcome because as Mr. Jeffrey said, this is on the schedule for next year anyway. And, um, but I think we... Well, if the officers take it on board that we're actually going to sort of take the community consultation as part of that involvement, 
then I think we'll end up with an outcome that will sort of best fit the community. So, Mr Jeffries, we would go through community consultation, is that correct? Yeah, that, that's exactly what we'll do. And I guess we'll, uh, we won't present a particular outcome to the community. I think we'll just give them options uh, for discussion purposes as part of that. That is fine. So we've moved and a second. Are there any objections? Those in favour? Recommendation is carried. Councillors, I've distributed the Mayor's report. Are there any questions on the Mayor's report, Councillor Bingham? The, uh, this is the first time I've ever asked a question on the Mayor's report in four years, so um, it's a first. But uh, lately I don't watch TV much, but uh, so what's the... What was the non-news TV interview all that? So it was to do with the, it was wind news and it was to do with the uh, power lines. And we also had a, a small session with them as well to do with the proposed toxic soil. Oh, move, there. move, Councillor Bingham. Second. Second to Councillor Dudzik. Those in favour? Carried. Councillor's reports. I'll start to my left, Councillor Bingham. Uh, just one little report. Um, so uh, I'm on the Baxmarsh Public Hall Committee and, and there's uh, numerous hall committees throughout the Shire. Um, so I assume they've all relatively got the same same issue. But uh, just in relation to, um, you know, obviously, you know, in the COVID environment, um, Council have sent out, um, I guess, checklists and documentation in order for these committees to enable them to to open the doors um, and the way that it was reading is that they they were kind of driving it um, but I guess Baxmarsh Public Halls Committee um, their concern is we we want council to drive it and just tell us what to do um, yeah and I don't know if, if if other committees have got the same issue but um, you know maybe can we just liaise with with other committees uh, uh, surra like surrounding that I'm happy to take that on, on notice. I think I think it is each each committee is going to be different, and that's the that's the danger, and and the way in which they use those buildings will be will be very different. But I'm happy to take it on notice and, and have a conversation internally. Actually, I've, I've just got another another one on that. Um, in regards to uh, opening these facilities, um, obviously they need to be deep cleaned um, in between. So can we, as part of the, the Working with Victoria Fund that we're obviously been, been um, uh, granted, are we going to get some cleaners um, as part of that process or? Is, uh, as part of the phase one of the Working with Victoria, uh, we didn't get positions for that, but that's not to say that we can't as part of a second application. Yes, Sullivan. No, uh, Councillor reports, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Keogh. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, during the last month, I've uh, uh, attended a Heritage Committee meeting, uh, a Grow West Committee meeting, and I've also attended the meeting at Murnyong last weekend regarding the HV transmission lines. Councillor Tatchell. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Mayor. I'd just like to. Uh, uh, to note the people of Murnie on for putting that on, uh, the, I wouldn't call it a protest information centre, uh, at very short notice. And uh, and it was great that uh, all of the councillors turned up, to, uh, including the CEO, to uh, to recognise the people's views on this matter. And, and it's going to be a very complex process that they're going to go through, and, and uh, it will all the way through to, uh, to our at. Uh, my concern is that, that it's been reported that uh, an application has already gone in uh, by OSNIC uh, for, for the planning of this uh, of this task. And uh, I suppose part of the question is that could we, uh, at the very least, uh, get to the bottom of where the application is lie uh, in terms of uh, and what that ap actual application is? So that we could report it back in fact rather than Facebook fiction, if you want. So, uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, if we could do that, that would make a lot of yep. Mr. Tree, so, yeah, no, I'm happy to follow that up immediately. Yep. That will be done, Councillor Thatcher. Yeah, that's it. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. 
Councillor Borgell. Councillor Dudzik. Um, I attended the high voltage transmission line meeting in Murniong, um, and as we all know, it was a big turnout and everyone's very concerned about how that's going to impact Moorable. Um, I also attended an online rally in relation to the toxic soil potentially coming into Mattingly Brown Coal. Councillor Tudzik. Someone move Councillor Reports. Move Councillor Sullivan, second Councillor Bingham. Those in favour? Carried. There's any urgent business, I'll start to my right. We'll go the other way around. Councillor Dudzik, no. Councillor Borgell. Councillor Tatchell. Uh, no, Mr Mayor. Councillor Keogh. No, Mr Mayor. Councillor Sullivan. I hate, to, I hate to spoil your run. Um, just uh, some time ago, I asked uh, to get an update of where the Bungaree Wallace Searing was. This was some considerable time ago. And to date, sort of haven't actually got an update on. I know that a lot of things happen in the interim. Could we actually just, or could, could council, myself more particularly, get an update of where that currently is at the moment, please? Yeah. No. Okay. Three years, Mr. Mayor. Um, we've prepared a briefing note. Um, so the strategic planning team has prepared a briefing note. The intent is to take it to the executive room in the next two weeks. Okay. And then from there, we'll bring it to a council for briefing. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Bingham. Oh, sorry, for a point of view. Certainly, um, Councillor. Bingham. what uh, Councillor Tatchell said, uh, wasn't it going to be a planning authority for any amend, any planning scheme applications for this power line that, we, that may be going through? Um, it was me. So my understanding of the process is I first get um, approval, a licence approval for to, to commence the project, and then they need planning approval through a planning scheme amendment. So they'll have to do a planning scheme amendment. So they'd be the proponent. So my understanding is they will be the proponent. Perhaps three, Mr. Mayor, picking up what Councillor Tatch was saying before, if that could sort of be, well, as information comes comes to light, it could be sort of put in some format that keep the community appraised of where things are at. Yeah. So yeah. So we definitely have a plan to make sure the community any information we get we'll share with the community. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. I'm done. What a problem. Councillor Bingham. Oh, thank you, Mr Mayor. I've got uh, two uh, urgent businesses. They don't require a motion. Um, so last week I had a phone call from Mr Rain uh, in Johannesson Place in Dali, uh, just, just in regards to the, um, the state of the road. Um, and uh, so I, I went there and, um, yeah, sure enough, it was... It was as bad as he, he was saying. Usually uh, people tend to exaggerate, but uh, Mr. Rain wasn't exaggerating. And Johannesson Place is, is just completely torn up um, and massive potholes everywhere. Uh, I know, I know uh, Mr. Jeffrey has sent out an officer to investigate. So I guess my question would just be, wh where are we at with that? Mr. Jeffrey. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'll have to take that one on notice and, and, and maybe contact Councillor Bingham directly on that one. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just my other one, and, and again, um, Mr. Jeffrey's been all over this one for quite some time, um, and it's a bit of an ongoing issue, but uh, 66 Underbank uh, Boulevard in, in Underbank. Um, there's a... Just be a just caution not to use names, just because we are live. Oh, it, it's around 66. It's not actually... Yeah, no dramas. But, um, yeah, it's, a, it's around there. It's the, they're utilising that site as, as an entranceway uh, and exit to um, Bellbrook um, while they do their little subdivision. Um, so just, I guess, taking on notice kind of thing is there's still a lot of rock and, 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 and you know, clumps of dirt and whatnot coming out and potentially this could rip up the road and it's not... It shouldn't... It shouldn't be a rate a ratepayer's responsibility to pay for that for that clean up. Is all I'm saying. Mr. Mayor, are these things really urgent business, or could they just be done by a CIB? Yeah, correct. So we haven't had a motion, Council. No, I just I, I yeah. realise that. And I understand what's. But but we don't want to sort of have every understood pothole coming up. Point taken, Council Sullivan. <laughs> all right. So no other urgent business. No closed session of the meeting tonight, so the meeting is closed.